Rasmus Hoyland made his Manchester United debut against Arsenal and there was so much promise shown in that 20-minute cameo from our new centre forward. What I'm going to do in this video is run through all the assets and the characteristics of his game that we saw on show against Arsenal from his movement to his speed to his ability to be a focal point and hold up play. He really is going to be the missing link for how this Manchester United team play and I think from Brighton forwards, you're going to see a slightly different United because of Rasmus Hoyland. So please drop a like on this video because this is definitely worth a like. He's there. He's smiling. I'm smiling as well after what I saw against Arsenal. What I'm going to do is run through it using in-game ex in examples from that Arsenal game. Starting with Rasmus Hoyland as the focal point. Now, there were different examples of this through the game. Let me run them through them for you. You can see this uh, This example here is particularly good because you can see that Manchester United, that's, uh, is that Harry Maguire down there? I think it's Harry Maguire. All the short options are covered. And normally when United just hoof this long, the ball, the ball immediately comes back. You can see Hoyland here covering the space, challenging. I think it's Gabriel on the ball there. He doesn't win the ball, puts his body in the way, loses it. But within a few seconds, he's up and he's challenging for the ball again. And what does he do? He forces the ball out of play. So Manchester United there have gone from a position where we're stuck on the edge of our own box. We want to play it short. We can't play it short. But we can use Hoyland as the option further up. A proper centre forward actually doing centre forward things. And this example here, right? When was the last time you remember Manchester United throwing a ball <laughs> into the centre forward? First of all. Second of all, him actually doing something with it. Hoyland using his body to get between him and the, def the defender in the ball, holds it up, turns his man. Hoyland has got that physical specimen about himself that really is going to make such a difference. And it's a crucial aspect. It's part of the reason that makes uh, Erling Haaland so unplayable. Because you try to get too close to him. Who was it? Um, the Real Madrid defender. Oh, his name's just gone in and out of my head. Can't remember him. Anyway, he was the one who got really, really close to Haaland. And that was the one that actually sort of nullified. It didn't nullify it in the second leg, though. But here, another example. Let's go to that smaller screen. There, you can see Hoyland using his body to get between the ball and the defender. And that's Gabriel trying to pull him, trying to pull his arms, put him off balance. But it doesn't work. He gets his body in between him and the ball. And therefore, chests it down, brings Bruno into play. It might not be the most, it's not It's not the most important thing, but having an actual focal point will change the balanced shape of our attack. Will give us an option to go long when that short isn't working. And it means that last time when United played, the bigger teams especially, uh, when United didn't have that short option and we tried to go long and it just came back, there was nothing we could do about it. But here's another example there. The ball in behind. Hoyland is there to challenge for the ball. Nods it down, brings his team into play. This is going to be a big, big difference for United. Having that outlet when we need to. I, Ten Hag, in, a, in an ideal world, won't actually have to use the outlet at any point in the game. But if we do need to, we're going to have the option there. We can go to the centre forward. We can release a bit of pressure on our defence. And as I said, in the bigger games last season, it, it kind of ended up being a recycling possession too often. It was coming straight back and we didn't. Um, we eventually crumbled under that pressure. Hoyland changes that. Now, another big thing, and this was probably the reason I was most excited about signing Hoyland, was the actual movement of him inside the box, like a genuine centre forward. Some nice examples of that in the game against Arsenal. Here you can see his run in behind the defender there, drags, creates a space over there that is then used. Now here, if the ball was to come in, he made a lovely run across his man. But Ericsson decided to go long, right? Ericsson decided to, let me see if I can pull this up on screen here, but I've got this open. No, I haven't got this open here. doesn't really matter. Don't need for this video. In fact, let me try and get it on here. One sec. Let's open that there. And let's get this here. Right, which I think I now can do. So Ericsson. Look, Ericsson could have brought the ball in there, right? Not in there, sorry. Ericsson could have swerved the ball in there. And Hoyland would have been in this position making that run. But Ericsson decides to go long and over there to Marcus Rashford, doesn't he? And we know what happens. So we fast forward here. The ball goes over to Rashford. And then here we see the, the these are the sorts of small runs that only a, a centre forward with the sort of natural instincts would make. And these are the, these are going to be difference makers for United in attack. 
He, you can see Hall in there circled in the middle. Rashford beats his man. And look at that. Immediately, Hoyland sees that opportunity. And what he does is just make a little darting run there. A little tight, a little, it's only a subtle movement. But that little run there, look at the, the space he creates. Now, of course, he's tracked well by Gabriel, who blocks it. He tries to improvise a finish, but it doesn't really work out. But he sees the danger here. And look, he's immediately putting his weight on the right foot to, to accelerate out onto the left. He does this a lot. You'll be watching this a lot this season. Some other examples from throughout that game. Here, you can see there's Hoyland as well in the middle. One second there. there in fact, let me go for the uh, magnifier. I think that's it there. You can see Hoyland's over there with Gabriel, right? Okay. Let's fast forward here. So many things to press. So Hoyland, you can see there, he puts the weight on his right foot, as I was saying there, but he bursts over to the left. And look at the amount of space that he creates in that split. Look, that's one second worth of movement. It's small, it's subtle, but these are the difference makers. At elite level, you know the margins are small and the, the ability to create space is small. Now, the ball doesn't, the ball doesn't actually come in from Rashford because everybody's going to have to get used to it. Oh, oh, crap, we've actually got a centre forward that's actually making these sorts of runs. Martial doesn't do that. Martial is far more likely to drift towards the outside, kind of drift a little bit left, create spaces in that sense, but not really inside the box. Not with that sort of, um, that much purpose, I think I would describe it as. He knows exactly what he's doing there. Wait on the right foot, dart out to the left and look at the space he creates. That's going to make a big, big difference to how this Manchester United team will shape up this season. Honestly, I don't... I think it's because we've been starved from actually seeing a centre four for so long that these sorts of things really do stand out and they do stand out from his debut. Now, moving on from that point, we know this is a big plus. And there was, there was one obvious example of that during the game. Hoyland's rapid. <laughs> Hoyland is rapid. You can see here, you can see. <laughs> Look how far behind his man he is. There's Hoyland there. There's Rashford running down there. Is that Saliba? Don't know. Arsenal defender doesn't really matter. And you can see the space that he makes up, the the pace that he makes here. Now, at this point, you probably would have wanted one of two things, right? You would have either wanted um, Hoyland to maybe drift off around there into the space. Hoyland to probably dart forward there. You can see here, as Steve's already done the alliance for me, him to dart through the middle. Nothing really comes from this. And uh, this is something that Rashford's going to have to learn, right? Rashford's going to have to pick his head up. Rashford's going to have to make, know that he's got this. The, Rashford's going to have to adapt his game bec because he's got Haaland there. And I mean that in a good sense. Because he's actually got a centre forward now. So this won't be something that comes immediately and straight, straight away to this United team and to Rashford. But it will come. And when it does come, and it's just going to be so much better. Another example here. A really good example. Casemiro with the ball there. Hoyland. Look. He can see where... Well, Casemiro. Let me go over there, over there. Casemiro can see what Hoyland wants. Hoyland's there. Casemiro's here. And you know exactly what Hoyland wants. Hoyland wants that ball in behind that defender there, which is exactly what Casemiro does, right? The ball goes down there. And because Hoyland's got the pace, look at that. In this in this situation, you probably would say that the, that the defender is favorite on the ball, depending on how much pace is on that ball there. And because there's enough pace on that ball, Hoyland has the ability to get in behind. And out of nowhere, United have released pressure on themselves and gone forward and used his pace as an asset. And that definitely is going to be something that plays into United's hands. And there was one there was one really nice uh, bit of link-up play, which I know you, you, you'll you remember from the game. And it was that his involvement in that uh, Garnacho goal that was disallowed. We can see here there's Hoyland just making the little cute run. But this situation here really was fantastic. All right. It was fantastic. He obviously receives the ball there. Casemiro's on him. He notices it straight away. And it's a cute little touch around the corner. Casemiro didn't even have to break his stride there. Knight is just a real good awareness, show of quality. He passes there and then he turns his man straight away. Look. The pass is gone and he's already turned to get back involved in the attack. Obviously, Garnacho goes through and the offside iron is... We know he scores, right? But it didn't actually come... Nothing actually came of it. Martial is not going to be starting many games for Manchester United in the Premier League anymore. 
And Manchester United are going to be a better team because of it. As I've showed there with that uh, Arsenal game as an example, his movement, his ability in the transition with the speed, um, his link-up play, and also his ability to be that focal point is going to bring so many different assets to this attack that Ten Hag currently hasn't had at United. He is the missing link up front. Now, it's going to take time, as I said, for, for Rashford to get used to the runs that he's going to make and for everyone else to get used to the runs that he's going to make because he will be a different player to, to uh, Martial, so it will take time. But the more he embeds in the United team, the better we're going to get as a consequence of it. I'm so excited to see what he can do. You can let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. If you did enjoy it, drop a like on it. He's got a big smile on his face. So have I, because I can't wait to see what this lad does for us. And for, to actually have a centre forward, a genuine centre forward, feels like a long time.